This is the Block A Pimple Podcast. I am your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me as always, halfway across the world, it's Jared Morgan. Hello, everyone. How are you going out there in pinball land? Uh, yeah, doing. Uh, we survived our uh, uh, Thanksgiving holiday, which I know you guys don't have there in uh, Aussie land. Are we, we, you have a while Thanksgiving? While we don't have it. Well, no, while we don't have it here, we certainly see a lot from the US folks telling us all about how much chicken and not chicken turkey, turkey. And, and, and other things that they've eaten. I think um, we talked about this one time where you were like, pumpkin pie, what? <laughs> well, the thing is, we didn't know about pumpkin pie until we got Costco down here. Oh. Because uh, they, they offer the pumpkin pie down here for those expats who want to um, eat it. Got it. Uh, so, you know, uh, but I've never tried it. I still haven't to this day tried pumpkin pie. So, uh, well, when you when you do finally get around to it, make sure you have lots of whipped cream on hand. That's all I'm saying. Oh yeah, it's it's basically the ratio needs to be more whipped cream to pie, right? I am, in my opinion, you should not see the pie. Yeah, <laughs> it should be no pie. It's like nothing to see here. It, it it should be a whipped cream pie that happens to have pumpkin inside of it. Inside it, yes. Just think of like um, think of like a a lemon meringue tart with like the big mountain of meringue on the top we'll just substitute that meringue for whipped cream right exactly absolutely that's, the way that's how you be. do it <laughs> i imagine though it's kind of necessary because like it'd be really quite rich having a pumpkin pie right? you know what uh, a lot of people uh just want a little tiny dab of of whipped cream um mm. it's to them it is it all wrong. about the actual flavor of the pumpkin um but me and my sweet tooth and all it's no i want whipped cream <laughs> Everyone wants the whipped cream. So when you say whipped cream, it's a spray cream in yes. the can. Yes. It's quite sugary and yes. quite sweet. And, and God forbid if you're one of those people that puts Cool Whip on top, because no. Um... Cool cool Whip? You have to explain. <laughs> okay, so uh, things that don't translate. Um, okay, so whipped cream, you have, you have it in the can. You spray it out, right? It's really yeah. light and fluffy. Cool mm -hmm. Whip comes in a tub, and oh. it is similar to whipped cream. It's also white. But you basically scoop it out with a spoon and go boop and put a dollop on there, right? So it's dollop cream, right? It, yeah, it, it, it's it's thicker. Um, it's not actually like if you would just go and get a tub of cream and you whip it up uh, yourself with beaters and put it on. It's not like that, is it? No, because it, again, it has a little more firmness to it. Um, uh -huh. It is used for various desserts. It mixes well with Jello. Mixes well with pudding. Um, okay. And, you know, making those creamier. Whereas, uh, like, if you put whipped cream in one of those, the whipped cream just like, you know, it's like water. Yeah. You know, in comparison. Um, yeah. But Cool Whip has a place on certain desserts and does not belong on other desserts. And two places right. it does not belong on is on top of ice cream and on a pumpkin pie. <laughs> yeah, on ice cream would absolutely be the aerosol whipped cream. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I would agree 100% on that. <laughs> Uh, glad we're on the same page there <laughs> yeah so yes um yes it's uh i'm glad that you had a good thanksgiving and uh yeah. there was much turkey and pumpkin pie eaten yep so now it's the uh the the christmas holiday coming up which is kind of going to be what our well our show's not about christmas but it's about uh the end of the year here and what we expected at christmas time in the pinball it, world. Is, it actually is christmas past yeah uh, <laughs> A year ago, actually, because yeah. uh, we we made some predictions and we want to go back through those predictions. Yes, so we're gonna we're going to true. We are going to get into those uh, in just a just a short bit. Um, yeah. First, Zen's uh, pinball party on Apple Arcade. They came out with a new mode. It is mm. Arena Pinball. Uh, actually, it's Funko Arena Pinball. So That's new right. license, folks. Um, I'm sure that. Uh, that was one of the things that Mel tweeted about way back in the day. Of, oh, I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> yes, that would that would be the the postmark tweet of around nine months ago, I think. Now, yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, the classic Mel dropping something that you can look forward to later on. Yes, uh, <laughs> this is one of those instances, I believe, where uh, they knew they wanted to put this kind of aspect into the game. Yeah, and they probably had a rough build, ready to go, and licensors such as Funko uh, maybe were like, "Hey, can we get in on your game somehow?" 
And then Zen probably was like, well, we have this thing. And they went, yes, mm. that's what we want that's attached to. That's what we want. <laughs> yep. That is exactly what we want. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, I mean, it's one of those easy licenses where it, it's not like Funko is intruding upon the game. Um, it's just an addition to the game. And in a lot of ways, think of it as... Uh, I guess I should describe... We're not going to play it, folks. We're not going to play the game here on air. Um, partly because I suck at it. <laughs> I don't need <laughs> yeah. to embarrass myself. Um, but also, just we didn't want to spend 20 minutes on that. If you have Apple Arcade, then you're going to be playing it. There's too many of you That's that right. also are like... I don't have Apple. Boo Zen. So I'm not going to convince you to get it because you don't have an Apple product. So there There are. There's no Um, sale. But what it basically is, (laughs) is it's a really shallow play field um, with essentially three lanes of orbit. I I would call them orbits um, Mm. or ramps uh, and a center hole. And then you have. your character representations are the Funko figures. They're across the top. There's four of them because it's a four-player um, battle royale. Battle royale. Essentially. And this is really what what this is. This is Zen's battle royale light. If anything, mm. this is their test version. I would think. I uh, I was going to say basically what we're seeing here: experiment in the wild. Yes. For <laughs> their um their upcoming battle royale. Right. Um, for sure. This um, is precursor stuff. And it basically winds up being that you're trying to hit lit lanes, and if you hit, you know, three of them, that sends an attack to one of the other players, and the attacks vary in terms of it could be like bombs dropping on the playfield and making it shake. It could be a beach ball. Uh, kind of think of it as uh, the menagerie uh, cage ball. on yeah ball on Circus Voltaire, except for it's free floating. It goes all around. I had a mode where there was a chicken walking across the screen and laying eggs and of course the eggs would divert your ball so there's oh yeah you're, you're doing kind of a different attacks uh that would affect the other person's gameplay and the point is is that at various points whoever's the low man on the score gets eliminated right and you yeah, want to be so the, you want to be a top dog at the end it's a death match elimination style um yeah. sort of thing yeah um it it's definitely an interesting way of playing, um, and it is a for sure a different mode of playing pinball because you got to be quick, and there's that oh god, I'm in last, you know, kind of pressure, uh, which of yeah, course right. makes you brick the ball <laughs> every single time, every yeah, single time. For sure. um, <laughs> so it's it's certainly worth uh, checking out, and it's I think a worthy addition to the game. It's what I. If you compare this to matchup in FX3, well, it smokes matchup because matchup was just you playing pinball and hoping for a better score. Whereas this, yeah, you right. can actively real time see the scores going and influence on. other players exactly. exactly and how they actually play. And it's it yeah, it's what it needs to be. So yeah. this is good. This is um, good evolution. Yeah. So that's it, it's it's some people looked at it and were like, oh great, it's another kitty version. Again, it's not so much that it's a kitty version, but no, it's not a full pinball table. It's it's like a half no, pinball it's not. table. Um, but it's it's essentially you couldn't really do a full pinball table with this gameplay style because the idea is that you want if you get challenged or your game is um, in jeopardy from someone else's power ups, you don't want to have a rich playfield array of shots. You want no, I've just got to dial in this ramp dial in that lane and dial in that hole so I can like recover. Well, so this is where I think I wonder, having it simplified is better. I wonder with Pinball Royale, if it's going to be the regular pinball machines. So it'll be like, hey, you're playing Pinball Royale on the getaway, right? Mm-hmm. So you have the full layout, but you're not having all the modes of it might be a game game. limited, like could be a, they might take out certain modes and do something else. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to be activating wizard mode is what I'm saying. Mm. You know, you have the layout and you have the basic scoring going on, but Zen can overlay, uh, you know, what lanes to light and what's going to happen or whatever. That's what I'm kind of wondering. Um, if that's what maybe, maybe they could put in things like instead of 
being able to shoot the loops like one of the power-ups could be that you block the return lanes or something like that and or like block the out lanes to give you an advantage or something like that you know like putting those physical barriers in um, yeah i'm just saying you're not gonna have all of a sudden red line mania start up no you know no well, we don't know, but well, it's we don't, we don't. But that's what I'm guessing. So, what you're saying in terms of, hey, when you're doing head to head, you don't want to have all these overcomplications. And I'm saying with Pinball Royale, I think people do want the full size pinball machines and these glorious layouts that you know have already been developed Work really well. But they yeah. don't need the depth of rules that's attached to that particular table. Because it's going to be like a two-minute game, essentially. Exactly. Right. Exactly. You're not going to so, have enough time to start any of that up. Yeah. Think of it like three-minute challenge or five-minute challenge. Oh, God. Remember when we did that? Yeah. That was like... Fun. Okay. So let's go back in the Wayback Machine, folks. Um, yeah. Back before we were doing a podcast, <laughs> we had right. a... Uh, what was it? It was a chat room. Right, Jared? On yeah, that's right. We had a, um, we had a IRC room. Yeah, we had a, an IRC room. Um, right, and we all used to congregate in there and cause trouble. Yes, um, um, that was the origin. That was the 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 embryonic stage of of us doing a podcast. But one of yeah. the things we would do because we were all playing uh, at that point, Zen was not out on PC. No, um, so we were playing on our PS threes, mm. and we started going. Well, who can score the most in five minutes? And so we would pick a table, and then we would get get it set up on our screen. And then we'd say, go, you have five minutes. Come back and tell us what your score is in that five minutes. And so, yeah, we'd go and we'd play for five minutes. And then we'd come running back. And I think we had some stupid rules like if you didn't report in under five minutes, then your score didn't count. And so yep. it was, you know, end early to come back and, you know, report your score. And there would be yep. one person that was the timekeeper, you know, that wasn't playing and, and stuff. But anyway, yeah, we did these little five-minute challenges. It was a blast. <laughs> we, that was, was so much fun yeah in oh, fact man. i think it wasn't on zen it was actually on pinball arcade um i think you're I, right I think it was on pinball arcade it was pinball arcade because it had a, a wider selection of tables yes um, back then well i think so, we were influenced by uh zen 2 on the ps3 because it had did have a five challenge. minute challenge on there yes it did yeah yeah so it was definitely on it was definitely on um pinball arcade but yes the the format is is actually great, and yeah. I, at some point I tried to get access to the um, the beta build for this, but I was too late, so um, I didn't get a chance to experience it. And I don't have Apple Arcade, so I probably never will, um, unless unless we get access to a beta online <laughs> um, with a, with the new next greatest thing, um, you know. But yeah, I. I, I probably it sounds like it'll be it will be fun to actually experience. So yeah. give it a go if you got yeah. Apple Arcade. Um, it is interesting what you say there with the Apple Arcade. I I went ahead and I I was like I should probably play some other games that are available on here. Yeah, <laughs> and I yeah. downloaded a bunch because I was like I don't want to judge Apple Arcade just on me playing one game. I'm yeah, like, that's right. You know, so I downloaded a couple of variations of other games and just to see you know. You know, I did a, a word puzzle and a crossword, and I did a. Uh, there's this one where it's it's called spin or sping, something like that. But it's like a little ball drops, and you capture it and loop around trying to capture stars, and then fling it off into the distance. It's actually kind of fun. It's a game about flow. Oh, that sounds cool. Um, yeah. But a lot of these games feel like they're just standard mobile games without the energy bars. Uh right. Without the smooth berries. Mm-hmm. So I don't yeah. know that. I don't think it's. I think when my subscription runs out, because I, like I said, I got the six months for free from Target. Mm. Um, that yeah, I don't. I doubt I'm gonna be. Won't be renewing. Especially since by that point, hopefully we'll have actual FX Zen three. FX. Uh, well, FX. FX beta. Yeah. Yeah. Pin FX. Um, not spin FX. <laughs> <laughs> I will say so. You guys remember me? Um, oh, hold on. Before I forget anything else. Yeah. Let's stop right here. Right. Last time, I asked you guys to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Get us over 500. Oh, yeah. You guys are awesome. You did exactly that. 
I promise we won't bother you again until we're near a thousand. So five years from now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but thank you, <laughs> yes. thank you so much, folks, because it really was bugging me. Um, yeah, just hovering at like four seventy five, four eighty for months. I was like, come on, let's get us past this. Um, yeah. So again, it's awesome. You. Thanks again, everyone. Yes, you all rock. So now you won't hear us ask for that again because I also got slammed by people. Oh, you guys are cheap. You actually mask for subscribers. Oh really? People oh yeah. Did that? Oh yeah. How dare we even roll mention? eyes? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, you guys remember me? Particularly I, uh, nice when we they don't even pay for it or anything. <laughs> we just do this, and they can't even. Oh man. Anyhow, uh, remember me talking about that game Beat Star, Jared? That I said was like oh, yeah. King of Smurf Berries. Yeah. 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 I'm so addicted. I can't quit playing it. <laughs> it's like the crack. It's the crack. You love it. What? Well, so, look. I love rhythm game. Mm-hmm. Uh, not any just general rhythm game. No, when you actually give me real music that I've heard, I, I can't help myself. That's why Guitar Hero and Rock Band were just like catnip to me. Um, mm-hmm. And after my initial disappointment with how little I was able to play because of the Smurf Berries and the energy bar system and all that, um, and, and how rapidly... You know, you had to. It started off with, oh, you only need five cards to get a new song, and all of a sudden it was, you need thirty. Like, oh, yeah. come on, this is gonna take forever. Well, mm-hmm. I'm now in that rhythm where I know how much to expect each day. I know how yeah. long it's gonna take before I get new songs. I'm kind of used to it now because I'm capped out. Thirty is the max of of oh. how many cards you need. Right. And I signed up. To, <laughs> I follow them on Twitter. Because they drop free songs, they drop free cards, they drop free gems, like pretty, oh. probably twice a week. Um, okay. There'll be some kind of bonus. So you get that. Um, and it's just... Oh, and the most important thing is, I figured... Well, I didn't figure it out. Somebody else had pointed out that if you fail a song or if you're doing badly on a song, rather than just let it play out and then be deducted the Smurf Berries for, and not be able to play that much. You just real quickly close the app <laughs> and then swipe it out and then reboot the app and ta-da, you're back to where you started from. <laughs> so well, now uh, that I have that... That in, exploit's going to be patched. <laughs> oh, it better not be. It better not you be. You can believe it is. Because... If people know about this and they're doing it and they're telling it on Twitter, they're going to be absolutely patching that exploit. <laughs> Actually, they're just telling it on Reddit. But... Um, <laughs> no, still, you know, game designers do love reading Reddit, so... But, you know. it, but it certainly allowed me to go from maybe getting maybe tops a half an hour of play out of it to... Me easily being able to play for an hour, <laughs> and well, still good. have I mean, and still have left over like because there's a couple of songs that just oh my god, they are destroy brutal. You. They just destroy yeah. me, and yeah. I mean to the point that literally, I'm 20 seconds in and all of a sudden I fail, and I and you're like oh, trying to I mean wow. it's just like thumb mania just go you know, and it, and it, what's <laughs> like weird your is your thumbs turning into molten lava, basically. <laughs> oh yeah, and you're getting pissed because it, I swiped. Why didn't it register the swipe? You know, oh yeah. my thumb's sticky. Oh no, I gotta. You know, it, it's just like all that going on, and <laughs> <laughs> you start to, You need to go get yourself a pair of capacitive gloves. Oh my so god! So if probably, you're a hardcore player, <laughs> probably right. It's like pro player. Got my gloves yeah, on. Um, well, like little thumblets. You know, the little <laughs> sleeves for the thumbs. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, no, it, it, it really it's got its it's got its claws in me, and yeah, so I'll just you, say you're, this, folks: you're hooked. if you uh, if you want to go down this rabbit hole with me, feel free to add me. Uh, look me up as Shut Your Trap Number One. That's Shut Your Trap hashtag one, and then go ahead and add me. And I'll go ahead and accept you, and then we can battle scores that way. Because um, I did start adding a few people, and <clears throat> it is amusing seeing what other people's scores are, and then having somebody who like beats you just by 200 points, and you're like, no, because it took me all I had to get the score that I did have. So, yeah, a little challenge right. going on. Well, as you can see behind me, I've got a set of electronic drums. Yeah, I noticed set up. that. And uh, so I have been playing quite excessively um, DTX Mania on PC, which <laughs> in, in the rhythm action game territory 
it's basically Konami's drum mania, but okay. for home use. Um, and I've downloaded, thanks to the very, very generous community out there who creates sim files for this mm. particular game, I've downloaded pretty much drum mania one to 10. Jeez. I've downloaded, I've downloaded, um, drum mania V to V six. I've even started downloading some of the more newer versions of drum mania, all of which are free to download all the songs, but these guys have made up like basic intermediate and extreme and master versions mm -hmm. of all the tablature and everything. And they've just put these out there for free. Like this has been going now for about 10 plus years. So there's a fair wow. bit of water under the bridge. So I've just been booting it up. The, the e kit connects to my PC through a USB. Um, and I've got a little, um, Logitech system there to blast out the sound. And it's quite literally like playing in the arcade. It is fantastic. Oh, and it's awesome. all free. I'm just loving it. And I'm actually getting Zachary into drumming through it. Like he actually is learning how to drum just as I did when I started playing the game. So I'm passing the torch to the next generation. They don't, uh, they don't have that so that you can actually connect like, cause I have the guitar hero drum kit. Um, they mm -hmm. don't have that. You can actually use that for that. Do they, they, you can connect, uh, the Guitar Hero kit up, but you're going to lose a lot of lanes. Oh, um, okay. Do it. You're better off getting like a, a cheap e-drum kit. Uh, pretty much anything that allows you to connect it to the PC will work. Mm -hmm. um, and if you can if you can get it to connect to your PC, uh, you, you, you're pretty much good to go. Mm -hmm. um, and there's, there's websites out there that have like gigabytes of SIM files you can just download mm -hmm. from file shares so it's very easy to get them you don't have to go onto torrents or anything like that they're right. freely available um you can use rock band controllers and stuff like that but you've only got four pads you don't have a bass pedal you don't have a hi-hat pedal you don't have the crash symbols there's a lot of lanes i was gonna say because you... guitar or with yeah with guitar hero you had five pads so three drum two cymbal and a bass pedal okay that's probably that would match that would match the Drum Mania V1 to probably about, uh, sorry, Drum Mania original all the way to V6. Mm -hmm. So you've probably got around, uh, let's say, about 17 versions of the game that would be compatible with that configuration. However, there is one thing I've found, and that is the way it works is you can tell the game, right, I've got a, a nine pad kit or a 10 pad kit, or sorry, 10 inputs. So it's like foot pedals and all that sort of stuff. Um, and then if you don't have a kit with the, that's just fully featured, you can say, well, I've only got six pads, so you can you know, downscale. Oh, okay. And what it will do is it will actually take the, the tab files, the SIM files, and merge all the pads together on one or two lanes. So anything that's like a, a mid-tom and a low-tom, that'll all be merged onto one track. Gotcha. Um, but I think... The, the problem is that I've, I was playing it like that because I, I was only really interested in playing what they call the nostalgia tracks, which is the ones that I grew up with and started playing and learning on. So I, I switch it back to six to six pads or six inputs and the game kept crashing all the time on some of the more complex songs. And I have a feeling what's happening is the game is trying to merge all the tracks on the fly and also do some auto basing because I've got some of the bass pedals turned off while I'm learning the the new sort of muscle memory for the pads sure. and my drum kit. And it, it crashes the game because it's doing too much. So what I did is I, I said, well, I guess I'll just turn on all my pads. And I turned on my nine pads and lo and behold, it stopped crashing. So okay. I, I think for those people who are using less pads, um, you might find some problems with some songs. A lot, a lot of the songs will work just fine, but the ones that are very busy and are doing a lot of track merging, it will cause a, an exception. Of course, but I guess there's free, one other problem that I would have. <clears throat> What's that? Well, <laughs> the drum kit uh, connects wirelessly via dongle that is a USB dongle on the PS4, uh, PS3. Yeah. But I think it's it's obviously... Specific for the PS. Specific. Probably. Yeah. If it was Xbox, I think I'd probably be you able might have to a, do it. A chance. Yeah. yeah. Oh well. Well, I mean, it's free to download, so all you have to do is download it and try it. As long as the dongle is recognized by the computer, yeah. It'll be fine. But the other thing to consider too is because it's connecting via Bluetooth or Wi Fi, 
you may have control or lag. And with a game like this, obviously, yes. you don't want to have control or lag. Yeah. Um, so it's better to have a wired connection. All the all the kits connect via a wire. Um, and the, I mean, it, it's it's a bit of a tough sell if you don't know if you're going to be fully into it or not. But right. Um, there's a lot of pretty cheap electric drum kits out there, and you can certainly pick them up, obviously on Craigslist or Gumtree wherever <laughs> you live, for very cheap. Um, what? Somebody doesn't want the drum kit anymore? I don't believe that's ever happened. Yeah, ex- exactly right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so if if you if you are a bit of a um a rhythm action fan and you know about the the drum sims like drum mania and gitadora which is what's called now um this is definitely a viable option um to actually get in there and learn the songs and and just have fun with drumming again like i've i've really enjoyed getting back into it i've realized how much i suck not having played it for a number of years, but I'm getting, I'm slowly getting my yeah. my muscle memory back again. So well, that's what I fun. noticed with with uh, Beatstar. Um, you start off with normal level songs, and mm. there would be some challenging bits that would confuse your brain. Well, I now have access to extreme songs. Mm-hmm. Extreme songs is not as bad as what Guitar Hero would get where all of a sudden my brain would just go, doesn't compute and just like fuzz Can't out. Do it. You know, I don't understand what I'm visually seeing because it's only three lanes. But within those three right. lanes, you can do holds, you can do slides up, down, left, and right. Um, oh, okay. So there is that bit of a, a challenge, but they recognize you only have two inputs. <laughs> yeah. So you have to be... Some people apparently play with three fingers, but ultimately the way the game is designed is that you should be able to Thumbs. maneuver with your thumbs there. Mm-hmm. Um, but you start playing these extreme songs and you start being able to get good at them and to the point that also because they're notes, they have full notes, half notes, and quarter notes that you can press. Okay. Then you go play the normal song and it's like the whole world is just slowed down and you can so <laughs> yeah. easily read the chart. And so mm-hmm. I think that's the same thing with the muscle memory where your brain just has to finally recognize what it's seeing and put that into action and then once mm. you can get past that you can apply that to almost any other song that has similar kind of deals absolutely the th- the really tough thing with drum mania though at the level like when you start playing the like the basic and the advanced versions of the songs uh, most people if they got used to where the pad positions are and all that on the kit they'd be able to do those relatively easy but when you start getting up to the extreme and then the master level songs yeah. Um, or muscle level versions of that song, you're basically needing to know how to drum. Like <laughs> fundamental you, you actually need the rudiments of drumming right. to be able to play those songs. Right. And then you, you no you longer can then, fake it to make it, you now actually have to know it. <laughs> you, you're not just going, you know, boom, boom, boom on the pads, right? right? You're, you're actually doing proper rolls and, you know, fills and stuff like that. And you kind of need to be able to play the drums. Yeah. So this game, if you go about it with the right mindset, will teach you those skills, but you have to put in a lot of hours to actually learn. Think of it like um, if you are playing this game, um, DTX Mania, and you are also learning to drum at the same time, it's a very good tool to actually practice your rudiments on because there are quite a few opportunities in there where you can actually do some basic rudiments in the the tablature that's coming down. So it's almost like you could use this as another exercise drill for if you're learning to drum as well. And then if you did that, you'd actually be way better than me. There's some dudes out there um, who are obviously been playing this for a while and are incredibly good. Um, oh. They will just, you know, they will ace songs. No, you, like you, a... you go on YouTube and you find these people that do the, the rock band stuff. That they're creating their own charts, and these charts mm. are stupid. I mean, I'm like, yeah, I don't even understand. And what a lot of their videos are t- about is how to modify your guitar so the action is totally easy to. It's it's no longer stiff and it's more responsive and whatever. But then they're also mm. telling you where to find guitars because they're tearing through their guitars in four months. Like it's destroying, it's it. destroyed, and they they need a new guitar. You know. <laughs> So. so the cool thing, the other really cool thing, and I don't have the option to try this because I don't have the equipment, but 
GTX Mania in in the arcade, you could play Drum Mania, and you could then hook it up to Guitar here, Guitar Freaks as well. Oh, okay. So, so there was a guitar version where you had a lead guitar or two guitars. Yeah. And you could base one person can play lead, one person can play bass, and then you'd have a drummer, and you could connect the two cabinets up via a link cable, and actually have a jam session hmm. with with it. So what they've done is they've basically replicated that for in DTX Mania, so you can connect up to two guitars and one drum on the same system and it will actually let you play essentially a band you can wow. play on on these guitars that you can buy and it's it's proper so this is also guitar heroes and drum mania if you want it to be yeah and the files the files that you download also support the guitar tabs they come with the guitar tabs as well so You've pretty much got this all in one. If you like both games, you're in second heaven because this one DTX Mania game will do it all. All right, so, so um, welcome to the uh, Blockade fun. Rhythm Game Podcast. Rhythm action section. Of the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where we discuss all things rhythm and our lack of it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Our uh, aspirations well... of being good at rhythm games. <laughs> that's why I just set up a YouTube channel saying white guy plays games okay <laughs> rhythm games okay <laughs> instead of instead of the uh the asian dudes who absolutely shred it you know uh, all right let's uh let's move over into the uh, pinball side of things so yeah um here we are about to enter december and things didn't go the way that we thought that they were gonna go in 2021 they uh, definitely didn't no. even at the time when we knew what was happening with with uh, the dreaded uh, COVID, um, it still didn't go the way we thought. <laughs> no, and obviously it didn't go the way that Zen was hoping for because we were supposed to have pin effects now. Now, basically, um, that's and we're it, now yeah. waiting until probably March. Uh, yeah, at the earliest. There's been a well. In fact, I think we were expecting it to be around October. Yes, actually. I think so too. So six months wait until we even get early access, right? Is where we're currently. The at. one thing that was promised, uh, Mel had said that we would have eleven new titles to play in 2021. We've had ten so far. Mm -hmm. uh, so there should be one more title dropping, and I'm gonna pretty much speculate it's gonna drop on zen pinball party that's it, well that's the only actively developed yeah. or releasing game at the moment so yes other than well i mean they could drop a new vr title but i don't think that's gonna happen we haven't heard I, anything uh -uh. regarding that so i'm no. thinking it's definitely zen pinball party yep um and probably honestly it will continue to be that way uh until march yeah 2022 you know, we mentioned, hey, if you looked at that back wall of Zen for hints about what might be coming, considering Definitely it was loaded with nothing there. but Funko uh, dolls, that was a pretty big hint, folks. <laughs> <laughs> it was a pretty big one. Yeah, that's uh, right. <laughs> so I'm just saying, there's still hints that are available on the Funko wall. Um, there, that there uh, are. If you're trying to if you're trying to guess what the next title is that's probably the place to uh, scour and look and see. Because um, The again, last episode in particular yeah, uh, is you know, the one not, you should be looking at. They're not putting those things up for fun. No. <laughs> they're putting they them up there the, because the stage... they, have, they have the ability to without somebody coming down on them. <laughs> that's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we, last year... All the way did... back in December 2020... Blockade yeah. episode 212, we did some predictions. We did do some predictions. So we thought it would be fun to look back uh, and see how accurate we were about... Because here's the thing that that we don't have anything new coming from At Games. We don't have anything new coming from... Well, we kind of... At Games has those uh, uh, those table packs, those Taito table packs that they've been releasing. Um, yeah. But we were talking about less software, more cabinet um nothing new from at games nothing new from arcade one up uh which we both were thinking that was going to be something so that's yeah. why we thought yeah let's look back at those predictions i have not looked at these or thought about these no. since that episode jared no. has gone back and uh skimmed those episodes to 
tell us what we predicted, and let's see how uh, how close or how far away we were from those predictions. So take it away, yep. Jared. All right. So um, I'll start with your prediction. So the way this one worked is where we had ones that you could take to the bank, predictions you could take to the bank, predictions that would be nice to have, but mm, yeah, probably not, and predictions that were wild speculation. Now we're not we're not doing the wild speculation here. Um, but we are doing the ones that are to the bank and maybe, yeah, maybe. And we have um, multiple picks per thing, correct? We, I think we had a choice each per, um, okay. uh, per category, like nice to have. Oh no, we had two, two each. I two think. each. Okay. I thought I was going to say, yeah, I thought there was two. multiple. Yeah. All right. All right. So the first one, this is you, Chris. You predicted that in 2021, Zen will announce at least two licensed Williams tables. In 2021? In 2021. Well, I would say that uh, I nailed that one uh, and undersold it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. Licensed 2020. Yeah, that's right. Yes, because we have the DreamWorks stuff. So How to Train Your Dragon, Trolls. Uh... That's Williams tables that you said. Oh, I said Williams. Williams tables. Oh, then I failed. <laughs> failed. Disqualified. Failed. Man, I was, all, I was all feeling high on myself like, yeah, I nailed it. There's going to be some light. Oh, no, that's a big old whopper failure. <laughs> so then we move over to my prediction. What, that was Zen will release two Zen original DLC packs based on pop culture franchises. Well, that's a tick from me. Ah, oh, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> that's a win, an absolute win, because that's exactly what you're seeing in Zen Pinball Party. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. Um, so that's good. We we sort of got we're we're sort of half and half there. Okay. Um, so the next one was me, um, and this was to do with I think we did one for Zen and then one for other. And okay. my other my other was Arcade One Up will offer a new PCB to make it Wi-Fi supported, probably around Xmas 2021. So that's a <laughs> failure. Yeah, disqualified. Not so much. Mm -hmm. No. So that was that's disappointing, but expected given the fact that you can't actually buy chips. So you know, <laughs> the only way you can buy chips is go to your fish and chip store and get some. There you go. Um, so the other one, Chris, on the back of that, you said uh, you predicted there would be no hardware changes. However you would be able to go and purchase the outstanding tables on Star Wars and Marvel cabs and load those up onto the respective cabinets to complete the collection, basically. Well, I'm going to say I'm half correct <laughs> in that uh, people sure did find a way to get the uh, Marvel and Star Wars cabs onto their Williams machine, didn't they? <laughs> and, and even more so... All of the back catalog of Zen Pinball FX2 on Android, <laughs> right, right, onto there as well. So you can now, sort of you, you couldn't get a half point buy there. Buy it legitimately to do that, but you—I mean—you would have to buy all the. Uh... You do have to own them. You have to do. You do have to own them. Yeah, and I was correct. No hardware changes. Yeah, it's true. So, what are we calling that—a win? I'm a calling. Win? I wouldn't call it a win. But I would well, call it a. <laughs> I'd call it a. I guess a correct guess. Yes, I'd call it a half, in a roundabout a, fashion. A, a more or less correct guess, just not in the way that uh, we intended. We were expecting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the community will find a way. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, so uh, the next one was um, another prediction from you to do with the other side of things so yeah. one up and zen will do a jurassic park pinball cab so that would be three jp tables and then back to the future jaws et and i said to tack onto that probably some fillers to make up the nine tables yeah no no not only did that not happen you still have difficulty finding these things in store and the price went up by three hundred dollars yeah so <laughs> no although surprisingly when they came down to Australia, you could get them at Costco for eight ninety nine Australian dollars, or, yeah. which was a that was something I would not have predicted. In fact, I can I'm on record saying that when these tables will actually come down to Australia, I'm expecting them to be one thousand three hundred ninety nine dollars. 
but I can yeah. remember my, my, my call on that. So I'm happy to be proven wrong. So see for you, it's $500 savings. <laughs> Exactly right. So, really, why don't I have one right now behind me, right? With with, with all of the uh, with all three packs loaded and all of Zen and Pinball FX two on there, um, it's because I've got pinballs downstairs and I've got Drum Mania, which is taking up most of my time. Yeah, so. I'm 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 really shocked that. Uh, well, nobody knew that the supply chain was going to be so disrupted. So disrupted, but. I am still shocked. My Costco doesn't sell. I was thinking that Costco would have, because we've had arcade one-up machines in my Costco for holiday time uh, mm. every year, and there's not even a standard arcade cabinet in there right now, let alone... Oh, really? Not even like a Pac-Man a derivative? Nope, nope really? no derivative. Um, wow. Whereas the At Games cabinets, both the pinball and the arcade, uh, I see regular postings of those showing up at Sam's Club's. So mm. there's where I don't understand the supply chain. How come at games is, is it a, a factor that at games is just not selling as many of these as arcade one up? Or is it that arcade one up supply chain got drastically more affected? I don't, I don't know what the answer to that is, but I'm just surprised that I'm not seeing these things in store. And I really am surprised that we didn't get yet one more skew out of this with the Jurassic Park or Universal uh, mm. selling. Look, certainly when things calm down, I think that this speculation will probably come to pass um, and we will actually start to see other ones. But I think until we get a, a more certainty around chips and lumber prices and all this sort of stuff coming down back to affordable levels again, I don't really think Zen is going to go into the market again until things calm down. With, with do you product. think? Do you think these prices are here to stay, or do you think the prices will go back down? I think that the prices have only gone up because they've had to go up, um, and I think that they will go down again once things settle down because. No one wants to buy them at this price. So I'm going to make a prediction. Mm -hmm. This is your prediction <laughs> for 2022. That's yes. Here's my prediction. All right. The prices are going to stay as is. They're going to be locked in now. They're going to, it's going to be locked in. Whatever new wave comes is going to, that's where you're going to have the Wi Fi. And that's where the you're more going features. To, and that's where you're going to have the store and possibly. Uh, a second screen. Either a second screen or the better resolution. Let's face it, Arcade 1-Up has to compete with at games because yeah, they're at the to. same price point now. So, yeah, and that's right. So you, I think you that's a, a very reasonable prediction, and I think you'll probably find that will come true in 2022. Because I just um, don't see the price. I, it's the whole thing of, oh, yeah, temporarily prices are going up. Do they ever fall back down? They, I mean, they never do. Only if they're gas. <laughs> and there's no way that you would actually get more things on a cabinet for less as well. So I think you're probably right that they will keep the price as they are, but then as availability becomes more prevalent, they will then add those things in and absorb those things into the higher price. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a... We can always bank on that for 2022. Which is or, unfortunate because I still think it's too high of a price point, but... Yeah. You know. Well, well, let the market decide, I guess. Yep. Okay, um, moving on. Okay, so um, you said that uh, on the subject of digital pinball cabinets, because this was a big thing in 2021. Was are, we, are we still on the take it to the bank, or are we moved on to the likely, but... Uh... This this is the take it to the bank stuff, okay. I think. Okay. Uh, and then the last two are actually um, uh, the nice to have, but won't happen. Okay. Um, so... Uh, the other thing that you said was that at games will not change a thing for 2021 and there won't be a wave two from toy shock. So win, win. <laughs> exactly. Right. <laughs> you predicted that very, uh, very did toy commonly. shock. Even they didn't even, they didn't even produce had... in 2021. Right? No, no. At games cut their grass. Big time. <laughs> <laughs> really, now, really did. I will say, 
technically at games did change something because they came up with the, they control, improved they came the, up design. With the control panel. Yeah. That's right. So they they iterated, but as far as the core cabinet goes, nothing has changed. And they Viking also Star. announced the commercial cabinet. That's true. So But that's not out yet. They just no, announced it's it. It's not out. Yeah, that's right. So I'm going to still say my prediction was true then. I would say that your prediction's definitely true there. Because I, I don't think, think the control panel, is, technically, I'm sure that was in long in development. Um, oh, yeah. Also, it was just, hey, we're not going to put it out on the first thing. We're, you know, it was definitely rumored in 2021. Yeah, it's, like, it's an addition to, but the core cabinet things. itself, which would be you know, what runs the thing and the basic shape of the thing, that didn't change one iota. No, no hardware. Spec Nor do I think... That. I don't think it's going to change one iota in like the, what the consumer would purchase, not the commercial version, but the, what consumer version. I think the exact same arc, uh, at games that you can purchase now is going to be the exact same that you're going to be purchasing in December 2022. You reckon that that's going to be yep. what it is? I think. But, and I say that because changes. their Legends uh, arcade cabinet is the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. They never change the design. No. I think there's certainly things they could change on the at game scene that would make it better, like the position of the panel, uh, interface panel, um, and things like the what they call the Vibs button, which allows you to switch between screens and stuff. Because mm -hmm. what they found in 2021, and this is no real surprise, that people aren't really playing the included game so much. No. Um, on the cabinet, <laughs> and they're using it as as a uh, in in USB on the go mode to um, play all the other stuff that they actually want to play. Um, <laughs> and so, lo and behold, what's a complaint that I see? Oh, I wish that there was a way to not have to plug in at the top of the screen to connect. And so mm -hmm. people found a workaround to do it all in the back or whatever. So they don't have a cable popping out at the top, you know, at the, all the way at the, the top. Of yes. The, something that we pointed out as a design issue from the get go. Yep. It's an obvious problem. But yeah, look, people will find a way. I mean, most people have taken the cabinet and just gutted it <laughs> and put monitors in it. They use it as a shell. Yeah. Which kind of, if I was at games, I would be looking at that and taking it as a bit of a criticism <laughs> uh, of, of what the product I was offering. Because yeah. I don't really see a lot of people out there extolling the virtues of all the included games on from you know from Farsight, from Zacharia and the, the Tato games. There, there's I don't know, maybe I'm just not reading the right the you know gushing. Well there was genuine excitement it. for the Tato stuff when it first came out, that first volume. I think there and then people the... are going, it's cookie cutter gameplay. Right, but I don't like think I, I don't know that has volume three I don't think volume three has actually come out yet. Um, if it has, I, I haven't yeah. heard any rumblings about it. And I'm also not hearing people go, when is it coming out? It's kind of like, just, uh, yeah, whatever. Okay, you know? I guess. Yeah. Like, they're using it for other things. Yeah. Like, most of the time you hear people saying, how do I install uh, Pinball Popper on this thing? Yeah. Um, like, they don't, they literally, do, like, as soon as they take it out of the box, they're modding it. So, I do still laugh at, uh, and I see funny. these comments all the time from people going, when are they going to get Williams games? Yeah, yeah. It's like and mm, and you can comment never. to them and tell them, uh, well, they're kind of locked up with Zen, and they're like, well, yeah, but they should be able to. It's just like, okay, how old are you? Twelve? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just I've given up. Yeah. So <laughs> I think I might have even unsubscribed from some of the app games for them because it was just making me sad. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I I couldn't. And look, you know, I know there's people out here uh, that listen to show that that love the app games ecosystem and love that product. I'm sorry, but I have opinions and I'm not afraid to share them because I don't get paid yep. um, by them. <laughs> yep. So, yeah. Uh, I also don't have one as well, so take that as you may. Although um, you did say that if you were to pick between the two, you'd pick the ad games. I would because I'd be modding it. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was a more complete cabinet option. Right. Um but don't you look at some of the things that these people have done to the at games? They put like you know contactors, and it's like the whole bottom of the cabinet is filled with PC activators, um, you know, transducers, 
it's 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 a five thousand dollar machine. I was gonna say at that point you're just shell. like what you couldn't just hire somebody to cut you a cabinet and do the exact same thing. <laughs> Really? Because like a... you're replacing every other asset. You're p- replacing all the buttons, all the cables, all the, you know, other than the PCB, that's about the only thing that is staying legit. Uh, oh, but what? that's not even true because, yeah, you're right. They're dropping in PCs. They're literally just getting rid of the entire yeah. thing. It's just a cabinet and the, the form factor, which, honestly, it's a, it's a limiting form factor. Yes. I, if I was wanting to do that and I was picking the At Games cabinet, like footprint the only reason why i'd print uh, like pick that footprint is because of its size if i was size constrained but you know if you were making your own digital pinball cabinet you would probably want to just go with a full size more true to scale one well and more um, to the point the at games one because of the angle that they chose is actually shorter than the arcade one-up cab the arcade mm. one-up cab comes up to the proper height for what an actual pinball cab plays at Whereas the At Games one, I believe, is three inches shorter. And so people are now yeah. buying massive Rises. risers to get it up to that level. <sighs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anyhow. Okay. So the, these are the, to round this out, here are the last two predictions. These are the nice to have, okay. but yeah, nah, probably not. Okay. So for you, you predicted that um, uh, Zen, the Zen licenses uh, for stuff from Planetary Pinball with their junkyard creature from the black lagoon and roadshow rom set changes apparently there was talk back then that they were releasing roms for new roms for those games oh, okay and those new roms will make it into the games as new rom sets Oof. um yeah yeah no so that definitely wasn't nice to have i don't even think they've have they even done new rom sets for i haven't heard anything about that for no. junkyard creature and roadshow though this was a surprise to me when i heard it. i went oh <laughs> More to the point, uh, so the Cactus Canyon continue. redo? Oh, no. No, it's not continue. Yeah, the remake. Remake. By Cactus Planetary. Canyon remake. Um, a lot of people were expecting that Creature would be next. and But there's also been... A, and so I think that that's where kind of that comes in. Mm, there was probably um, speculation back then. Yeah, with what's interesting with the Cactus Canyon remake, the one that you buy right now, which sold out like that, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. is the Cactus Canyon that you knew. Yes. The new code that Lyman is working on still is not available. That'll have to be downloaded uh, later on. Later on. So we haven't even seen. The the I mean I I know that some improvements got put like for instance it now actually has a match screen, <laughs> the yeah. match game screen. So some improvements got put in, but the new code of gameplay, um, is is not currently in there. With the more balanced rule rules and there's more of a wizard mode and more and wizard, like yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That stuff's on on its way to which, to to be provided. Which by the way, I don't know if you watched any of that footage of that game. <sighs> oh, it's gorgeous. Oh, it really is. Like, what I actually found, because I've only ever really seen that game in uh, Pinball Arcade, and for the first time, I actually saw the um, the mine. Mechanism. Oh, moving up and down? Yeah, and actually behaving like it should, like mm-hmm. not letting balls and stuff go through like it does in Pinball Arcade. Like, the, the balls will always go through it. Yeah. Like, it's there's no collision on it. So, it, it looks great. It yeah, really does I've... look great. I would. I would. Have I'm, one. I'm jealous. <laughs> I would. I would have one. We might see them down here. That there are people who buy all the the Chicago or the Planetary Pinball games down okay. here. So there, it's a possibility that we might actually see one. I know that the Godzillas are starting to make their way down here now, and uh, there's a couple of launch parties happening down here in the next couple of weeks for Godzilla. So yeah. you know they're 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 heading down here. We'll see them. Um, so my prediction uh, of the nice to have but probably yeah nah is an interesting one because there's well i'll tell you and you can deduce what you okay. think so zen will announce in 2021 that they have partnered with jjp to produce their <laughs> earlier out yeah. of production titles like wizard of oz and hobbit uh-huh now, i see where you're going with this so here here's something interesting i might have been off with the manufacturer yes 
but I reckon certainly not in 2021. We can definitely obviously rule that out. Like I think for these predictions, pretty much scrub 2021 because we yes. the supply chain is just screwed. We we could not anticipate that. But the the inkling here is that I thought that Zen would actually partner up with other boutique pinball manufacturers. And based on that interview with Spooky, I predict that this will come true, but just a little bit later in 2022. And it won't be JJP, it will be Spooky. But yeah. having also said that, my prediction for 2022 is that this will pave the way for companies like JJP to also go, hey, yes, we'd like a slice of that. Can we also do it? Yes. That's what I'm saying. I think I, I absolutely agree that uh, I, Spooky is inevitably happening. Yeah. <laughs> it just it just yeah. feels too natural and too obvious uh, after that interview. Way too obvious. Um, yeah. Way too obvious. JJP, we still got to see them work out licensing issues. Uh, Zen, mm. that is, with big name titles because... Let's face it, um, those are not small licenses that JJP signed up for. <laughs> no, no. Um, no. Hobbit, Wizard Hobbit, of Oz. Wizard of Oz, Willy Wonka, and <laughs> freaking Guns N' Roses along with Marshall Guns Gibson. And uh, all the other band equipment that's on that table. Yeah. Um, it's a licensing smorgasbord, that thing. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's that that's going to be hefty. Wizard of Oz, so that's MGM... Okay, uh, but I think I think Wizard of Oz is distributed by Warner Brothers. Willy Wonka is Warner Brothers, and mm. Hobbit is Warner Brothers. Um, so, well, and, well, Hobbit is not only Warner Brothers, but it's uh, co-production with MGM. So, if we see Zen strike a deal for a Warner's table, like say Harry, or not Harry Potter. I wish. Um, Dirty yeah, Harry. Imagine. Oh. Yeah. Uh, if we see Dirty Harry come to that is Williams, the gateway. That's an indicator. Or, yeah, that would be an indicator of ah, they're finally have a talking to somebody at Warner's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And if that happens, then I think the JJP thing can slide in. Shoot, I wouldn't be surprised if Guns N' Roses is on a Warner label. I think they're Geffen, but I don't know if Geffen was absorbed. I mean. If it's part Who of Warner Music days. or whatever. Yeah, I mean, all the music is like basically conglomerated into three different, you know, you're either Sony, Warner, or uh, guys, Columbia even around anymore. I don't know. But it, it, I don't even know. It, it's pretty limited how many labels they've, they've had actually to are out because there. of all the streaming, right? They've had to conglomerate their resources because of all the streaming platforms and trying to get that right. So, yeah, there's no really, for the big name studios anymore, it's pretty much narrowed down quite yeah. a lot. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I would say. You, you're you're on to something. You're not. Uh, you're not. Speaking I can't claim gibberish. It. I, but no, I can't claim it for 2021. But I reckon I was on to something. Yeah. Back then. Yeah. In 2020. Uh, so I'm I'm happy to be kind of right. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're on the way to being right. I'm you're, on the way. I'm you're more well right than wrong. <laughs> that's right. I'm more right than wrong. Let's let's call it that. I'll pay that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it that, that's our predictions from ones that probably will happen to might happen but yeah nah maybe so there you go we, right. we didn't do horribly no so it'll be uh, it'll be interesting to hear what some of your guys' predictions are um, mm -hmm. for the for the next coming year let's see what okay. you guys have to say maybe drop us some lines on Twitter and uh, you know the account's right there or actually, more mm. importantly, that one, the blockade one. Uh, yes. <laughs> but uh, I would love to hear your predictions. See what you guys think. Mm. Um, Me too. And not just, again, not your wish list, but what you no. legitimately think could happen. What you happen. believe in your heart could happen yeah. in 2022. And you can use this format like we did in, in the show for 2021, um, and that is the... Take it to the bank. This will absolutely happen. I'll stake my house on it. Um, then, boy, the I would have nice lost my house. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I would have been in trouble as well. Um, so, uh, you know, maybe you know, so much that I'll buy you a beer if I'm wrong. 
Let's let's call it that. I'll buy you one of the lovely new succulent Zen. I was gonna say, beers. will you buy a Zen beer? <laughs> I, yeah, I'd buy a Zen beer if I could get it in Australia. Huh? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, so let's take that one. Let's buy. I buy. If I get it right, one. I will get a nice little mini cabinet. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so then the other one is like it's it'd be nice to have, but probably not. And then the third level is wild, crazy speculation. That's cats where you and dogs wish living together. together. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And then send it through to us. Like you can do it on email or you can do it um, quickly on a Twitter post. But we'd love to hear what you're thinking, what your brain yeah. is telling you. Um, so get it done. Get it done. Get it done. Yeah. All right. Um, last things, just because we've talked about it many times before, and I feel I'll, I'll touch upon this briefly. Uh, right. Live action Cowboy Bebop came out on Netflix. Mm -hmm. Yes, I consumed it in one day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have been a fan of the show since it first aired here on Adult Swim. I immediately bought the soundtracks. I've got the t-shirts that you've seen me wear on various episodes. Um, so yes, I'm a huge fan. And I'm going to say it just like this. The show's enjoyable, people. Don't believe all the people mm. that are peeing all over it and saying it's utter crap and unwatchable and trash and blah, 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 blah. It's a live action adaption. That's what it, it is adjacent to. It does not replace the anime. You can still have that in your heart of hearts. It still exists. Mm. But this is just a retelling. And I honestly feel like this first season, um, it dealt with a major story arc that winds up leaving the second season going in, I don't know what direction. And that excites me. Because That's cool. Because it, it'll let them spread their own wings and create their own stories. Uh, it paid a lot of fan service at the beginning and then kind of, again, started drifting into its own territory on the back half. Um, I thought the cast was really good and the music, of course, was excellent. So I'm excited by all the potential and I think there's a lot to work with. I thought it was a, a good-looking show, very colorful, very without being a direct rip of an anime, uh, because I'm sorry, that style, you know, speed lines don't exactly work in live action. <laughs> um, mm, yeah, but uh, I think if you is it as good as the anime? No. Does it have the emotional highs of the anime? No. But you also were able to watch all 26 episodes of the anime and go on that roller coaster. If you just watched the first six episodes of the anime, you wouldn't have that emotional high either. So uh, I think there's where some of the... It, it's hard for the criticism. My only main criticism for the show was that it was obvious they didn't have the budget to do certain things. And one of those main certain things was you never saw a space battle. You never saw the right. swordfish in action with Spike piloting it the way he should pilot it. And there was an, one particular episode that the ending is completely different from what the anime is, and it's that space kind of thing. So mm. I'm hoping it that... It had to make sense against sessions, in other words. Yeah. Um, the live acting part. Yeah, yeah. Right. so I'm hoping that uh, if this is successful enough, ignoring the critics, it's a, for Netflix, all they care about is viewership. Yeah. So if the viewership is there, that they get a second season, I would suspect that the um, that's when they would look at the criticisms and go, what can we improve? And I'm sure that the budget would increase to also um, allow for those allow things. Allow for that. Yeah. So well, I think that's it's good worth news. checking out. I'm, I'm, glad that, I'm glad that they they didn't disappoint you because I know you're a, a colossal fan of yeah. that series. And it would suck if they actually disappointed you. And um, I still want that. a pinball table of it, Zen. <laughs> mm, make it happen the other thing that i saw news recently well it's probably news to me but a new season of stranger things yep which was a big surprise um to me at least so that's gonna be interesting oh yeah uh, looking forward to that i quite like stranger things and uh it's, it's sort of felt like they wrapped up it felt like this was a hey let's reboot it oh no because no oh, really no. Oh, this was planned was it oh yeah absolutely because if well, I guess probably COVID screwed up the filming schedule for it. Yes, right? it did. Yeah, so that's my why it felt my like understanding was that they were intending it to have a five season run. 
Oh, okay. Um, because I don't, cool. I don't know if they're going to, if they in because of COVID and the kids growing up, they might wind up having this be the last season. But it hasn't been announced as a final season. Um, mm. but obviously, as the kids grow up, that becomes less interesting. You know, because the whole point was little kids fighting demons, not you know, eighteen year olds. <laughs> Any girls find it. Although, yeah, you know, honestly, that's still cool. Sure, um, but it's not as cool. <laughs> it's, yeah, you know. Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's that's quite true. So um, we'll see. And where also, that goes. the it's still good that they kept a period though. Like, I'm looking forward to seeing more eighties nods. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. it's gonna be great. Yep. And and Jared informed me that he's uh, uh all the way through Breaking Bad and is almost all the way through Better Call Saul. So he's officially a uh, a junkie uh, on that stuff too. Oh yeah, I, I'm very much, very much enjoying did both you, of those seasons. Did you watch Ozark? Uh, no. Okay, no. no. so there we go, Jared. You're going to, you're going to feel this uh, uh, withdrawal as soon as you finish Better Call Saul because the new season. I'm already come. feeling it now. Right, I know and the new I'm season involved. hasn't come yeah. out yet. Um, there is another season coming out. There is one more to go. Yeah, yes, which is cool. Um, but don't worry, there's a patch, and that is watch the show Ozark um, because it is every bit as good as those two shows, just in a little bit different manner. But it's the same, gives you same, it gives you the same buzz. <laughs> oh, good. All right. The same hit. Yes. So how do you spell it? Ozark. O Z A R K. O Z A R K. O Z A R K. Ozark. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Add it to the list. Add it to the list. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, that's going to do it for us uh, this time, folks. We, uh, I don't know. <laughs> we keep on saying it. We're closer. So much closer to having Mel on. Um, yeah. He's a hard man to track down. At the yes. Um, really is. And he knows it. And he, we, had, we had to, we were going to do one. Well, today. <laughs> today. And he, he has or next plans. Week. No, it's going to be next week. It was gonna be yeah, was yeah. gonna be next week yeah, but no, we'll, he has to go flying. We'll we'll get it there. It'll happen. Uh, we hope. <laughs> We're trying. Eventually, it will. Yeah, we are trying. So, yeah. so that might be. Uh, and, and hey, if we do get that, that'll be probably our uh, our Christmas present uh, for the show. And you know, we can mm. call it a wrap on the year if that happens. Put a bow on it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So we'll see what uh, what comes with that. Uh, so that's kind of a, what the the schedule is looking like because I know that it gets you know it's the holidays and we always uh, get slammed with uh, with our own availability as the holidays come forward. Um, yeah, it's always tough, but yeah, you know who knows what will happen this year. Uh, we might be able to do do one. We might not. We're not making any promises. No promises. We squeeze them when we can, and if we can't, then we go. Oh well. <laughs> yeah. That's right. So until then, we have nothing to tie you over other than the promises that a Mel interview is on its way at some point. Uh, at which point, we'll probably ask Mel about, Jared? Stuff and things. All right, folks. Until then, bye bye Bye-bye.